How's it going everybody? My name is Jim and welcome to Restoration Projects. This video is going to be part one of a series of tearing down and rebuilding this Delta surface grinder from the 1940s or 1950s. Right now what I'm doing is I'm loosening the gibs so I can remove the table from the saddle. Okay, so we got the uh, table off right here. Now we're looking at the saddle. And this is the uh, oil track right there. So this is just cut a groove in here that allows oil to be spread out through over the ways. So these are flat ways. And then you have this channel here where this is the gib. You have these four screws right here that push it in to keep this uh, riding smooth. And then you have these washers right here that are just held down with these two screws. And there's a lip on the uh, rack that catches on here. That's what keeps this table from lifting up, is just these washers right here. And here's the holes right there. I believe those are the drain holes for the oil to go into. And I think those are what go and oil this bottom track here. So I won't know until I get this thing fully pulled apart. I'll come over here and I'll look at the table. So I have it flipped upside down. And you can see a decent amount of grease built up there on the rack. But overall, this is in really good condition. See the ways right there? I don't feel any different indents or anything. It feels pretty, pretty flush all the way across. I don't see any scoring in there, so those are all good signs. You have your oil cup there. Oil goes in, drips out of here, and then it's a total loss lubrication system. So it's not designed to be recycled. It's designed just to have new oil flush through all the time. As you can see, it is uh, pretty greasy and grimy. Probably hasn't been off in a while. Some of the literature I was reading on uh, the old Delta manuals is they actually encouraged people to take these saddles apart like this and clean them out because grinding dust and all that grit and grime, it uh, gets in the middle of everything and oil will pull it in and you don't want there to be grinding dust on these uh, machine surfaces here because that will throw off your tolerances. Right there you can see that groove. So that's what those washers back on the saddle, that's what held this thing in place there. It was just those two washers there on that saddle. So, yeah, we'll continue the teardown. Now that we have the Y-axis nut removed from the saddle, I'm able to loosen up the gibs on the side there, and the saddle now just comes off of the um, grinder. So we're going to take it over here and set it on our little portable cart, and then we can go from there. Quite a bit of grease and grime built up over the years. But these do look like they're in pretty good condition. There's the uh, holder for the lead screw nut. And same thing over here. A little bit of a dry spot there, but overall not bad. And there's your gib. So, pretty straightforward. This product that I'm using to remove the grease and grime off the saddle here is called Zep Floor Stripper. And the way I found it was actually a different YouTube channel. It was uh, Jason from Fireball Tools. And he's out of Spokane, Washington. And he recommended this on his Christmas top 10 list of his favorite things for the shop. Um, this works really good. Before, I was using Crud Cutter to remove uh, grease and grime. But I did find that when I used it on my Bridgeport milling machine, it would actually remove some of the paint because it was such a strong uh, degreaser. And some of the paint started coming off with the as I was wiping it down. So this uh, flooring stripper, I didn't notice any paint coming off when I was uh, going over the saddle right here. Okay, so I found these instructions online and this is the schematics to make the spanner wrench to take the wheel off of the surface grinder. So it's just a piece of one and a half inch diameter, quote, extra strong pipe and we're basically going to cut away all but a 7 30 seconds notch there that's going to stick out and that's what's going to engage the um, dogs on the nut that goes onto the grinder wheel. So this gives you all the schematics, the size that they want. And on the back side here, they just want to 
eight inch long piece of a quarter inch by three quarter inch um, stock here. And when it's all said and done, they want you to weld it. So this is kind of hard to see, but here's the pipe here, the spanner wrench that has the two dogs on it. And they just have you weld it to the pipe. Um, there is a smaller one that they have you make that's, where is it, on this backside here. But I'm not sure if this goes for a different machine. I haven't found anywhere that would need this style of spanner wrench. So for right now, because I can always make it later, we're just going to make the big one so I can get that grinding wheel off. So here's the pipe. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly diameter that is, but it's thick enough that it will... There's enough meat on there that's going to grab onto the nut when I turn on it. So uh, I'm going to take over the lathe, cut it down, and then we're going to go over to the mill, and I'm just going to mill off two sides of it to where we have this little notch there. All right, here's a spanner wrench. It's nothing fancy. It's not necessarily even pretty, but it will get the job done. I followed the schematics, except for the spanner wrench is supposed to be off this end here. Um, everything else I kind of kept within the measurements that they gave us, and yeah, let's throw some paint on it and call it good. So, 
First up on repair here is I want to make a bushing for this. So there's quite a bit of slop as you can see in there. Like that's just unacceptable. So what I have to do is take this roll pin or this taper pin out to pull this whole shaft off and then see if I can put a bushing in here or if I have to take this whole sleeve out and remanufacture it. So I'll bring the camera in closer here and we'll get this knocked out. Now I'm not sure if it shows up very well in this video, but right there where my thumb is, you can see uh, the shaft is actually narrower there. So it has actually been worn down. Um, this is where it rode in the bushing. And the reason it's worn down so much is because when they put this bushing into the saddle, uh, there was never a hole drilled from the oil cup through the bushing to allow oil to drip down and lubricate the shaft inside the bushing. So it was dry for all those years and this is the main crank that rides the uh, table back and forth on the saddle. So it gets a lot of wear and there's a lot of force put on it. Right here is the bushing and this bushing I believe was made out of cast iron. I tried tapping it out with a hammer and as soon as I did it shattered. So uh, what I did is I just used a chisel there and I'm just tapping it out, breaking it in pieces, trying not to damage the exterior hole that it sits in. And the whole thought process here is I'm going to remanufacture the bushing and I'm going to do a silicon bronze buildup on the shaft. So first order of business is take the shaft, we're preheating it right here. This way if it's all heated at the same time and at the same rate, it won't warp. I'm not a welder, so take everything I say with a very big grain of salt. I'm a home hobbyist in a two car garage, so this is just my thought on it is if I heat everything up at the same rate, and cool it at the same rate, I shouldn't have warpage. Right here, just using my TIG torch and some silicon bronze, and we're just going along and making passes over that worn down part. That's where the bushing's gonna ride, and so once we have this built up here, then I can take this back over to the lathe, mill it down so it sits a little bit uh, thicker than the rest of the shaft, and take that final measurement on the uh, silicon bronze buildup and that will be determine how uh, big of a bushing I need to make. So right here, this uh, I think they ran through like five or six sticks of silicon bronze here. Uh, there's quite a bit there, so I would add some up and then have to go over it again with the, uh, the torch just to try to blend it in. And I'm not a, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, silicon bronze or any welding process for that matter. I'm just a hobbyist at best, so don't look for uh, professional advice from this video as far as welding goes. Here we are over at the lathe and I'm just making really light passes on this uh, because silicon bronze attaches to the metal but it's not you don't bring the base or the parent metal to a melting point. Um, I was afraid to take really thick cuts on it because I wouldn't want to strip it off and have it peel off of the metal. So I just take really light cuts and try to sneak up to a final dimension that I would be happy with here. Um, overall, this process worked really well. Um, you can see, I mean, there are some pores in there, um, but at the final pass right here, pretty much all of the bushing surface there would have some sort of silicon bronze to ride on. So, this part right here, this is the making of the new bushing. This is, I believe, some, just some hot rolled mild steel. And what I'm doing is I'm just dr uh, center drilling it out, and we're going to drill it out with a there's my half inch drill bit, and we're going to bore this out and have this about five thousand five thousandths more than the um, silicon bronze build up on that shaft. That way it can ride in there nicely. And once I have this installed, I'm going to drill a hole in it. That way oil can get in there and lubricate it. So hopefully we don't have the same wearing issue that we did before. So right here we're just boring it out. And once I had this piece completely made, what I did is I took it 
and I put it in the freezer so it would shrink. And I took a propane torch and I heated up the cast iron where this uh, bushing gets pressed into. And the whole idea behind that is if I can expand the cast iron and shrink this bushing, it will be easier to push in. And then when both pieces return to a normal temperature, um, you would have a tight pressed fit. So right here, we're just heating up the cast iron. I'm just using a little blowtorch and it popped right in. So now that's in, we're just going over it with a drill right there. And this is the oil cup that was supposed to add oil, but never did. And now it's drilled out, just pulling out the oil flake or the metal flakes. And we're gonna get ready to assemble it. So there's the uh, shaft going in. We're putting it back on this gear. You can see the silicon bronze there sitting inside the shaft. Put that taper pin back in and the handle back on. And this has been repaired and we are in business.